So good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mohit Aran. I am the founder and CEO of Cohesity, and I'm going to be talking about what we do. Um, thank you for coming. So let's start. Uh, the company was founded in 2013 uh, by me, and we are here at the headquarters in Santa Clara, California. Uh, we have a very strong engineering pedigree. I'm very proud of that. Uh, we have people from notable companies in the valley, Google, Nutanix, Riverbed, VMware, and many more. Uh, about 30% of our uh, engineering team actually comes from Google. And you'll see some of the other presenters uh, from Google presenting here. In total, we've raised $70 million in venture funding across our A and B rounds. So we are well funded, uh, thanks to our investors. So that's all about the company. Let's jump into what we do. So let, let me motivate why we do what we do. Right? So we liken the storage in a data center to an iceberg. The tip of the iceberg, the part above the surface of water, <coughs> is what we call primary storage. That's where uh, you run your mission critical apps. Uh, apps that have strict SLAs, uh, all the stuff that makes money, that's what you run there. And, uh, but there's a big part of the iceberg that sits beneath the surface of water, and that's what we call secondary storage. Secondary storage consists of a bunch of stuff. <coughs> Sometimes people think that secondary storage only, only consists of backups, but no, it consists of everything that's non-mission critical. And that includes file shares, archival, DevOps, backups, analytics, and, and cloud, and, and perhaps a few more things. So there's a lot of stuff in secondary storage. <coughs> So that begs the question, why does it need disruption? Why does Cohesity need to do something here? So let me try to answer that through a couple of problems um, that plague this space. The first one is fragmentation. And I think it jumps out from this picture. There are so many things in secondary storage. For each of these, our customers have to go to a different vendor to get a solution. For backups, they go to one vendor. For archival, they go to another one. For DevOps, they go to another one. For cloud, they go to yet another one. So our customers are juggling multiple UIs. They have to deal with multiple vendors. They have to deal with multiple licenses. So it's a big uh, amount of fragmentation. That's the first problem. The second problem is that this space is highly inefficient. And let me tease into that problem by giving you a few examples. Sometimes the bulk of the data in secondary storage tends to sit in backups, or more generally in, in the data protection environments. And unfortunately, data protection environments today are like an insurance policy. We dump data there. They're used as a dump repository of data. They never get used unless disaster strikes, unless people lose data. That's a big problem. And you know how much people spend on data protection worldwide? about more than $50 billion. So are we saying that we spend all that money on just an insurance policy? That's highly inefficient. Whenever we need to do anything with that data, whenever we need to get any insights from the data, whenever we need to mine that data, we copy that out into uh, analytics or a DevOps environment and then operate on that. So that is associated with huge migration costs. So it's going to take you hours, if not days, to move those petabytes of data into an analytics environment or a, or a DevOps environment. That's number one. Second, when you do migrate that data, you're going to be ending up with lots and lots of copies. So all your DevOps environments and your analytics environments probably have copies of data that also resides in your data protection environments. And the more copies you have, the more is going to be your cost. Copy data management is recognized to be a $45 billion problem by analysts. By I think IDC had a paper on that. So those are two problems that plague the second storage space. Let's talk about another one. And that's uh, the problem of dock data. Our customers, we did an ID survey of uh, ID professionals, and we found that the data in secondary storage is growing 50% year over year. And yet, another survey showed us that our, our customers have no clue why it is growing that fast. What sort of files are taking more storage? <coughs> Uh, they have no insights into the number of copies that are being stored. So all that big problem is referred to as the problem of dark data, right? So this data is dark. 
that's a problem with second storage space. No one has any clue what's going on. So it's kind of like our customers are sitting in a Titanic, and all they see is the primary storage. But what's going to really hit them is the problem that's really there. That's second storage, all that dark data, the inefficiencies, the fragmentation. And that's what we hear. Huge manageability problem in this space. And that's why we exist. That's why Cohesity exists. We want to solve this problem. We want to take a look at the whole of the space. We don't want to look at a point problem in this space. We want to look at whole of the space and try to solve this problem. So next, I want to go into our vision, which is we want to build an infinitely scalable storage platform. We want to take all those workflows that I showed, and we want to consolidate them in this one platform. There is no more a need to go to multiple vendors, no need for fragmentation, no need to move around and copy around data. Uh, and, and by virtue of the fact that we are moving all these workflows into one storage platform, we can actually <coughs> illuminate all that data, causing that dark data to go away. Quick question. So, yes. And I, I know the answer to this, but I just want to clarify. When you, this is going to sit other than your primary storage. This is for everything else. That's right. This is non-mission critical You're not trying stuff. to do mission critical stuff on this no, at this point. No, this is non-mission critical stuff. Okay. Secondary storage. So our, so in three words, our vision is <coughs> secondary storage consolidation. That's what we are here to achieve. That's what we want to do. So with that vision, um, let me go into some of the requirements that we need to build such a platform. In order to build a platform, what's needed? Why is it hard? So let's go into some of that. So first of all, well, it, it needs to be web scale. We are talking about petabytes of storage in that resides in secondary storage today. You can't have a small platform and expect to solve this problem. You have to build a web scale platform. And what are the requirements? One, it has to infinitely and incrementally scale. You can't scale to four or eight nodes and then say you can't scale anymore. A lot of vendors claim scalability, but that's where it stops. It has to be infinitely scalable. You can keep on adding nodes to the cluster. It needs to scale in performance. It needs to scale in capacity. That's one. It needs to be incrementally scalable. What that means is um, customers shouldn't have to worry about what should, it, what should the customer buy five years to, to take care of five years of storage. They should buy what they need right now, and then they can grow incrementally by buy one unit at a time. And it should never stop. It should grow from there infinitely. There should be no single point of bottleneck. What's the point of having a, a web scale system when it's going to be limited in scalability or performance by some one component in the cluster? Absolutely no single point of bottleneck. No queen nodes, no central guy doing something special, no asset databases floating around that are not distributed, nothing, nothing like that. It's truly, truly distributed. Then in a web scale platform, in a huge um, you know, a cluster, Something or the other is expected to be always down. You cannot assume that something will go down and some admin will come running and fix that in 15 minutes. So you have to assume that things will be down at any time and they will stay down indefinitely. And yet, this cluster should be operational. It has to be always available. You're putting all your workflows, all your secondary workflows uh, on this platform it has to be available even across upgrades. We have a customer who's who used to use a very famous vendor, and they <coughs> say it takes a village to upgrade that system, and it's going to take four days of downtime. And that's a simple system. This system is highly sophisticated, web scale. It needs to do upgrades seamlessly, even when it's always up, even when it's running all those workloads. And finally, it needs to deal with heterogeneous hardware. Why is that? Well, one reason is that we want it to scale incrementally. So if our customers buy something today, very likely they're going to buy the next thing one year from now or six months from now. And by that time, there'll be a hardware refresh. There'll be newer hardware. So this piece of software needs to deal with heterogeneous hardware. The newer hardware probably is more capable. The software needs to realize that and kind of move data properly. If it has more dense disks, just take care of them. Put more data on the new hardware. So why is this stuff hard? Well, the problem is um, you, know, you can't just go take a class in a university like Stanford and learn this stuff. You've got to have you know, this 
through years of experience. This is my third time building a web scale system. The first one was Google file system. Second one was Nutanix distributed file system. I was the CTO at Nutanix and the brains behind Nutanix. This is my third attempt. On top of that, I have. Um, well, good luck to him. Uh, <laughs> the second, uh, the, the second thing is that my team has a DNA for building this stuff. I have a very strong team, you know, uh, from companies like Google that have done that have worked on stuff like this. So, so we have years of experience and the DNA to build this stuff. That's why we feel that we can build this when uh, some of those can't. So, what is our philosophy? I think I want to. This is really, really important. Philosophy is that we want to move compute to the data and not the other way around. We don't, want to, we, want, we don't want to have a world where people are moving data to computation because that's what we feel is happening today. When people want to do some, get some insights on the data, they actually take data from their data protection environment and copy it out into another cluster, moving the data to the compute. We want to do the reverse. We want to converge all those workflows on one platform so the data stays where it is. You just move the compute. That's our philosophy. And because of that philosophy, we want to basically run multiple workloads on this one platform. So this platform needs to be able to deal with mixed workloads. It needs to be able to de deal with backups. It needs to be able to deal with DevOps and all the other workflows that I talked about. Which also means that, well, this platform needs to provide isolation between those work work workflows. It was very easy to run them on different pieces of hardware. They don't interfere with each other. But now that they're on one platform, you need to provide some isolation between them. You need to provide QoS. And that's also what makes this problem hard. It's not only that we are building a web scale system. It's also that this needs to um, provide some fine-grained QoS. And we'll talk about how we do that later in this, uh, in this talk. Let's look at uh, some of the requirements imposed by, uh, imposed by these mixed workloads. So I'm going to take three big uh, workloads, uh, data protection, uh, DevOps and analytics, and then talk about the requirements from within those. Let's go into data protection. We want to be a Swiss knife of data protection. We don't want our customers going to 10 different vendors to implement data protection. So this platform needs to have backup to do backup software. No need to go to a vendor like Comwall to buy backup software. It needs to cover the storage where you put the, put the backups. It needs to deal with archival workflows, in particular cloud or tape workflows. All of them need to come with one platform, and you should be able to manage all that with a single pane of glass. It needs to be able to do remote replication for disaster recovery. So these are all the requirements that you need from an uh, integrated data protection point. The second set of requirements I'm going to talk about is fr come from DevOps. So as I said earlier, uh, we want to support the DevOps workflows. So we don't have to do copy. We can do effective copy data management. We don't have to move stuff out of this device into a DevOps environment. So the requirements from that are that we need to be able to support random IO very effectively on this cluster. Backups are very sequential in performance. But DevOps is very random. So we need to be able to support both. We need to be able to do co effective copy data management. So when we spin off multiple DevOps environments, we ne need to be able to avoid copies. And that requires very efficient cloning technology. We should be able to take clones very frequently. And we should have global deduplication. By the way, by global deduplication, I mean that when you write data on one node of the cluster, it gets deduplicated against anything that was written in the cluster on any of the other nodes. It does not mean that you do deduplication only within a node, because I think some vendors confuse global deduplication with that. This is truly, truly global deduplication. Those are the requirements from DevOps. Now let's look at the requirements from, from analytics. Well, analytics for us come in three forms. The first one is what I refer to as storage analytics. This is stuff that gives you information about the storage itself. How much is the data? What kind of users are storing data? What kind of files are taking up more space? If you're backing up stuff, can you crack that backup open and provide a searchable index into that stuff? This is storage analytics. That's the stuff that we need, our customers already need. So this is pre-programmed. But what about stuff that we don't know upfront our customers need? For that, we want to make this platform programmable and customizable so that our customers can 
possibly inject custom code and run some custom queries to get some answers that we didn't think about upfront. That's the second requirement. And the third one possibly is to basically do third party integration with tools like Hadoop, Apache Spark, so that customers can run arbitrary analytics environments on this cluster. So those are the requirements from an analytics point of view. And with that, given that all the analytics and all the data lies on one platform, we will finally be able to illuminate that dark data.